President. Senator from Illinois. Madam President, last week the Senate concluded the impeachment proceeding. I heard one of my colleagues say it is the most serious thing that the United States Senate has the constitutional authority to do. That argument can be made, but I would disagree. I think the most serious thing that we are assigned under the Constitution is the declaration of war. Because you see, it isn't just a matter of the fate, the political fate of any individual. It's the matter of the lives of many good people in America who serve in our armed forces who may be endangered if we decide to go to war. Even under the best circumstances, quick and uh, effective war can lead to the deaths of, innocent, of brave and innocent Americans who are simply serving their country. And that's why the comments made by the majority leader this morning need to be responded to. His suggestion that the Kane, uh, Senator Kane's war powers resolution is a mistake, I think, really ignores the obvious. It has been 18 years, almost 18 years, since Congress and the Senate had an active debate about the United States engaging in war. I remember that debate very well in 2002 because it was a debate which consumed the attention of the Senate, the House, and the nation over whether or not we would invade Iraq and whether or not we would invade Afghanistan. Most of us remember the argument made by the Bush administration for the invasion of Iraq. We were told that there were weapons of mass destruction in that country that could threaten our uh, the neighbors of Iraq, our allies, and even the United States. Over and over again, we heard that phrase, weapons of mass destruction, weapons of mass destruction. I was serving on the Senate Intelligence Committee at that time. I remember the testimony, classified testimony behind closed doors, and I had serious doubts in my mind as to whether there were, they had established that weapons of mass destruction actually existed, and whether or not authorizing a war meant that we would just use that as a device to force uh, Iraq into better conduct or would actually invade their country. As a consequence, I joined 22 other senators in voting against the invasion of Iraq, uh, which we voted on on the floor of the Senate in 2002. 22 Democrats, one Republican, all voted against that invasion of Iraq. Obviously, we did not prevail. A majority gave that authority to President George W. Bush, and the invasion was underway. I can still remember it. I can remember the unfolding events as our troops arrived, um, made their impact on that nation, and eventually took control of Iraq. Then the search was on for the weapons of mass destruction, which led to our invasion of Iraq. And the, and the search continued for days and weeks and months without any evidence of weapons of mass destruction. It was a farce. It was a fraud on the American public. Almost 5,000 Americans lost their lives because of our invasion of Iraq. But the premise, the pretense that led to that invasion was misleading information from an administration. But at least, I will say this, there was a debate. There was a vote on the floor of the United States Senate. Did anyone at that time believe 18 years ago that we were voting for a war in Iraq that would continue for 18 years? On the invasion of Afghanistan, the argument was made and convinced me and virtually every other member of Congress that the parties responsible for the tragedy and terror of 9-11 were somehow camped in Afghanistan and we needed to go after ISIS and all those responsible for that 9-11 invasion of the United States. I voted for that. But I'll have to say as well, there wasn't a single senator or member of the House who really believed that 18 years later we would still be at war in Afghanistan, yet we are. The President's now talking about removing more troops from Afghanistan. We'll see. We've heard these promises before. Perhaps it will lead to such a decision by the administration. But the point I'm getting to is the Kane War Powers Resolution, I see Senator Kane has come to the floor here, really addresses the most fundamental question of our constitutional authority and responsibility to declare war. 
As Senator Kane says in this resolution, which I'm happy to co-sponsor, Congress has the sole power to declare war under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 11 of the United States Constitution. When I hear Senator McConnell come to the floor this morning and argue against the, the United States Senate stepping forward and asserting its constitutional authority, I wonder, how does he explain in the Commonwealth of Kentucky that we are still engaged in a war 18 years after there was any vote for an authorization of the use of military force in Iraq and in Afghanistan. And the larger question, which Senator Kane and I try to raise in this resolution, is what does this mean in terms of our future relationship with Iran, the neighbor of Iraq? We know that we've had a, a rocky and contentious relationship with that country. We know that they have engaged in acts of terrorism, which have cost American lives. There has been tension between our countries for decades. We know that full well. But President Obama tried to at least bring some sanity to the relationship by eliminating the ability of the Iranians to develop nuclear weapons. He felt, I felt, and most Americans felt, that was a step in the right direction. Take the nuclear weapons out of the hands of Iran so that even if they're engaged in conduct which we find reprehensible, it would not reach that horrible level of a nuclear confrontation. I thought the President was right. I supported his effort, President Obama's efforts, to develop this uh, inspection um, mechanism where international inspectors would come into Iran and see if they were developing weapons and report to the world. We engage countries around the world to join us in this effort to stop the development of nuclear weapons in Iran. It was an incredible coalition, which included Russia and China that joined with us and the European nations to impose this limitation on nuclear weapons in Iran. I thought it was a move in the right direction to have this kind of international support. And yet, when President Trump took office, sadly, he kept his promise to eliminate that nuclear control agreement between the United States, Iran, and the other parties. By eliminating it, he basically gave permission to the Iranians to continue in their developing new, uh, development of nuclear weapons. Yet he warned the Iranians that if they did, there was a price to pay. The very reason why this resolution by Senator Kane is relevant and why we need to consider what the next step will be. Because if we are going to stop the Iranians from developing a nuclear weapon, and I pray that they will not, how are we going to do that and how, mu how much force will we use in response? Will it be authorized by the Constitution and by Congress? I listened to Senator McConnell this morning, and he has basically said, do nothing. Do nothing. Don't assert the constitutional authority of the Congress under the Constitution when it comes to any declaration of war uh, against Iran or any future military endeavors. He described this as a one-off situation, a one-off use of force that we currently have seen in the targeting of General Soleimani. Perhaps it was, but we don't know the answer to that. When it happened a few weeks ago, there was real uncertainty about what would follow. And I suppose that uncertainty is here, still here to this day. The uh, majority leader this morning said that he thought the impeachment effort, which came before the Senate in the last week, had, uh, would not have occurred if we had been patient. And he said, this is another example of impatience, where we are setting up this constitutional responsibility of the administration. Well, I disagree with him on two counts. If Senator McConnell was counseling patience, patience at an impeachment trial would certainly have involved evidence, documents, and witnesses. And yet he was impatient to get it over with without any evidence coming before the United States Senate. I also would say that patience uh, is a good virtue when it comes to most of life's experiences, and it certainly is if there's a prospect of war. But what Senator Kane is doing is asserting the responsibility, uh, asserting the authority, I should say, of Congress to step up and be party to the discussions about whether we move beyond the current situation to one which involves troops or any type of invasion of territory in Iran. I see Senator Kane is on the floor, and I'm going to defer to him at this moment. But I will tell you this before I sit down. As long as I've been a member of the House and the Senate, I have felt that Congress 
has a responsibility under the Constitution to declare war. It's a responsibility which most members of Congress talk about a lot, but frankly don't want to face. They don't want to be on the record for or against war for fear they'll guess wrong in terms of a certain foreign policy decision. Regardless, I think the framers of our Constitution understood full well that if we're going to ask American families to potentially sacrifice the lives of their sons and daughters in combat in a war, they should have a voice in the decision on going to war. And that's what this article in the Constitution provides. A voice for the, for the United States public when it comes through their Congress as to whether or not we are going to engage in a war. Otherwise, we find ourselves in a situation like today, 18 years after an authorization of use of military force, and part of it under false pretenses, continuing a military effort that was never truly authorized. I support Senator Kane in his effort. I'm glad it's a bipartisan resolution. I yield the floor.